control the United States Senate. That is how the constitutional process actually works. Let's talk a little bit about FASTER. And this is a different place that Sal and I come from. I'm, I'm not a career politician. I've been a small businessman for almost all of my life. We have a philosophy. If it's broken, fix it. If it doesn't work, stop doing it and don't continue to spend more than you take in. Rather than burdening every man, woman, and child in here with increased taxes, there were better solutions to be able to repair those bridges and roads. We proposed them, you rejected them. I'm gonna stand up for the people who actually pay the bills. I did have one question for Mr. Tipton. Um, and this is the moderator's choice. I can't ask questions if I'd like. Uh, the homestead exemption, uh, Mr. Pace had mentioned that you voted to kill that when you were in the state legislature. Is that true? I, I thought you said that you didn't. I did not. So you did not. Uh, and just to be able to clarify that for you, uh, as Mr. Pace knows, you have first reading, it's introduced. Second reading where amendments are offered, and then the bill is just moved forward perfunctorily to third reading for the vote of the legislature. Mr. Pace, On third you... reading, you vote what, what the bill is actually going to do. I voted no. He took away the homestead exemption. Do you agree with that? Uh, what, I, what I'd encourage everyone here to do is uh, pull out your, your smartphones and Google fact check Tipton on Pace and Homestead break written by Charles Ashby, a reporter with the Grand Junction Sentinel. He used to write for the Durango Herald, he used to write for the Pueblo Chieftain, and uh, I think he explains it pretty well how Congressman Tipton uh, voted to uh, you know, eliminate I, the I need exemption. to be able to respond to that because it's not true. So you say the fact uh, check Rather is than incorrect. quoting Charles Ashby, I'll do you one better. Just pull up the record out of the Colorado State Legislature. It actually shows our vote. I voted no, he voted yes. So you disagree with the fact check that he's relying on? I'm telling the truth. I voted no. All right. Let's move on to uh, the next question from our panelists, Caradio's Leela Hall and Leela. Pueblo is home to the largest turbine tower manufacturing plant, Vestas. President Obama has said he supports the wind energy tax credit. Governor Mitt Romney has spoken against the tax credit. What will both of you do to protect Vestas jobs if the wind energy tax credit does indeed end this year? We'll begin over here with Mr. Tipton. You know, it breaks our heart to be able to hear of any job losses. We're sitting in a county right now with better, when we're talking about real unemployment, better than 20% real unemployment. Losing these jobs at Vestas hurts. I have worked with our United States Senators to be able to promote the inclusion of the wind production tax credit. I pulled together the energy producers, Vestas and many others. Into our office, we brought in representatives out of Texas and elsewhere to be able to talk about this promising new technology. In fact, when we met with Vestas, they pointed out they're only going to need this credit for two more years. We're going to continue to push for it. My opponent likes to talk about being able to buck your party. My presidential candidate and I disagree on this because this is a technology, this is an actual investment that can actually create jobs and preserve jobs right here. But we face another challenge as well, and the wind industry themselves are pointing out this. It is not just the production tax credit, but we are seeing around the world their orders are dropping because of poor economies. The economy of the United States of America is suffering. One of the ways to actually be able to create demand, to be able to get those people back to work and to be able to expand those opportunities for the all of the above strategy that I've uh, supported and passed legislation through the House of Representatives with is to actually get the American economy moving. That means we work to get the people back to work in this nation once again. Mr. Pace, your two minutes. I got a call yesterday from a former neighbor of mine, Cheryl, uh, who husband was, has been working at Vestas, and she asked if I knew anyone who could help out with food for their family. Uh, the layoffs at Vestas are affecting people everyone in this room knows. And instead of addressing the problem, we're getting uh, more blame game 
out of Washington. Congressman Tipton mentions the uh, unemployment rate in Pueblo. Uh, when we're in Grand Junction, he mentions the unemployment rate in Grand Junction. I hate to remind him, but he's the one in power in Congress who's had the ability to actually turn some of this around. Uh, the production tax credit has had a bill in Congress the entire time Congressman Tipton has served in Congress, uh, a bill that if he had signed on and supported, if, if, he'd had a, if he had fought to bring to the floor and it had passed, it would have protected Vestas. And I met with Vestas. They said the only reason orders are down is because of the uncertainty over the production tax credit. Um, sadly, this is a long, long trend with uh, Congressman Tipton of not supporting uh, all of the above. When we were in the legislature, uh, we passed a bill to increase the renewable energy standard from 20 to 30 percent. It was uh, passed with broad support, and after it was passed, uh, Excel Energy purchased 129 wind turbines from Vestas, and even before they shipped those orders, Vestas announced a thousand new hires in Colorado. Congressman Tipton refused to support that. Time and time again, he has chosen special interests over uh, our jobs here in Pueblo. Now, my record I'm proud of, and I believe in solutions and bring jobs back to the manufacturing sector in this country. That's what our, uh, that's what our campaign is based on, and that's what I'm going to fight for in Congress. Mr. Tipton, you have one minute rebuttal. You know, if you've had a little seasoning in life, you may, may remember a guy named Paul Harvey. And he always had a radio program called The Rest of the Story. I almost feel like I'm having to be in that position with Mr. Pace right now. Here's the real story. I have passed through the House of Representatives a bill planning for America's energy future. I list wind energy. I have co-sponsored legislation with a gentleman out of Arizona, Paul Gosar, that's going to strip away a lot of the mandates and regulations that are in place to be able to make it easier for wind energy to actually be developed and to be able to put people back to work. Mr. Pace has a problem of actually wanting to do things without paying for them. We're putting forward actually common sense solutions to actually have a pay for to be able to achieve that goal. He may think you have unlimited money and can be taxed and feed to affinity. I'm going to be standing up for you. We're going to be pushing for that all of the above strategy. My record demonstrates it. My record supports it. And the bills I've passed have stood behind it. But I didn't increase your energy costs by voting for 1365, as Mr. Pace did. Mr. Pace. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, 1365 was sponsored by Josh Penry, the former Republican minority leader out of the Senate. It was a bipartisan piece of legislation to encourage clean burning natural gas uh, towards our uh, energy future. Um, it passed almost with a, a two-thirds vote in the legislature. Uh, I want to touch on something Congressman Tipton mentioned earlier uh, about my life experience, my work experience. Um, I, I'm the son of a mechanic. I'm, I'm, uh, a, a, for, I'm a teacher. I'm a I'm a former uh, dishwasher and a maintenance man. Um, I've done a lot of jobs that a lot of people in this room and this community have done, and we deserve a voice in Congress too. And Congressman Tipton, uh, your, your words ring hollow. Uh, this talk about career politician, uh, when you've been a party chairman for over 25 years, you were a Republican National Committee delegate dating back to 76, uh, you've worked on presidential campaigns. Mr. Pace, seems like you're, time. seems like you're describing yourself, Congressman. Good. So do you want to do you want to respond? Every American has an obligation to be able to pr actually work in the process to make the republic be able to work. The difference between Scott Tipton and Sal Pace is, I worked for free as a volunteer. He's been a paid employee to be able to actually promote his political agenda. And that's been your real job. When we were in Grand Junction, I asked you specifically, name me one full-time private sector job that you've had. You never could come up with one. Congressman Tipton, that is, a, that is another 
bold-faced lie. Everyone on here can get on the internet and watch exactly what I said. I said, the last private sector job, I was a waiter, and I'm proud full of Full time, Mr. Pace, full time. Full time, full time. and I full said time. it there, and I can't believe you have the gall to get up here when the internet exists and change the facts. We aren't changing the facts, you change your story, Mr. Pace. You know, he just gave an interview to the Durango Herald, listed off his experience, said he graduated from college, then went to work for John Salazar in the state legislature. Then he followed Mr. Salazar to Congress. Then he ran for the state legislature. No mention, Mr. Pace, of being a waiter. And I admire any job that you do. Uh, my wife's a teacher. You've taught a few classes. I think that's great. It's important to have good education in this country. But I come from a completely different perspective. I have actually worried about whether or not my paycheck will cash. It hasn't been government paychecks all my life. Congressman Tipton, uh, I've been teaching since uh, 2001. You know the facts as well as I do. Just like your ads, you like to distort the facts for political gain. Everyone in America is sick of this fighting and this partisanship. And let's go ahead and move on now to our next panelist question, Mr. Roper. <clears> Hi, <throat> guys. Both of you support requiring health insurance companies to cover pre-existing conditions, a major feature of Obamacare. But analysts have said that feature is only workable if many more people are participating. Yet both of you oppose the mandate in Obamacare that requires people to insure, to purchase insurance. How, do you, how can you get insurance companies to cover pre-existing conditions without a mandate? And this question begins with Mr. Pace. Uh, the real problem in our community is that people need access to health care. People need affordable health care. As someone who has a libertari libertarian streak at times, I don't think we ought to be requiring someone to uh, purchase a product. Um, what we need to do is look at real reforms in healthcare. We have to uh, look at the fee-for-service model. We have to be uh, encouraging uh, the ability for everyone to have preventative care. It costs a heck of a lot less to provide treatment to high cholesterol than if someone arrives at the hospital for the first time with a heart attack. Uh, what we've gotten instead out of Washington is trying to use this issue, trying to use people's uh, the future of their, uh, their ability to, to live or die, use it for political gain. Um, at stake is uh, the uh, uh, pre-existing condition clause, uh, allowing kids to stay on their parents' health care until uh, they're 26, uh, portability, a whole bunch of issues. And Congressman Tipton, uh, I know what he's going to say. He's going to say that he's proud that he's voted to eliminate Obamacare. The, the, the fact of the matter is uh, Congressman Tipton has voted 33 times in Congress to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And he didn't expect, <laughs> he didn't expect a different result after vote one, after vote 10, after vote 15, after vote 30. He expected the exact same result every single time. And it was to score political partisan points. We shouldn't be using people for, for partisan advantage. Instead, we have to really address the problem. We have to look at real reforms. We have to look at getting some of the waste out of, uh, uh, out of uh, waste and fraud out of uh, Medicare. And we can do this if we put aside the partisanship. Mr. Tipton, your two minutes. Pete, I think your question was actually about uh, the uninsurables. We actually have some legislation that I'm working on with a, a, a medical doctor, Congressman Price out of Georgia, to be able to create those pools, to be able to do it here at our state level. And I'd take it even a little further uh, than probably my party would like. If we need to, this is an area